Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the recap and review of NCIS Season 11, Episode 12, Kill Chain. So I did not see this episode as it was airing, and I actually came home right after it finished. And I immediately checked online because I have no self-control. And a lot of people really did not like this episode, and so I went into it expecting this absolutely horrendous monstrosity of an episode. And what did I think? Well, you're gonna have to keep watching to find out. Please don't leave me. Look, I got a tablet, so now I don't have to carry the laptop and possibly shatter it all over the floor. Yay, now I can shatter this all over the floor. So it starts out with a woman desperately bringing to this man and the man gets shot because apparently we need to get out of here translates into, hey, what's that thing in the sky right now? <laughs> That's so funny. Also, let's just skip checking the pulse and dramatically toss ourselves over the body for five seconds. <laughs> and if he wasn't dead already, she's probably suffocating him by tossing her entire body weight on top of him. Also, Bishop is in the theme song now. Jimmy Palmer worked 10 years for that spot. You've been here three episodes and you've almost killed multiple people. For some reason, this elevator scene just makes me want to just, uh, uh. <laughs> Okay, I love the fact that she took a picture of her parking spot and I too would probably accidentally and obnoxiously intrude on a very important conversation, but I just cannot tolerate her in this scene. She just bothers me so much every time I watch that scene. Uh, and apparently Delilah is a big deal. So while Dinozo, the king of facial expressions, spews exposition, and McGee continuously slams an iron door in his girlfriend's face, Gibbs tells us that we have a case. So let me get this straight. A man is canceling plans with his lover, and she's deeply annoyed and upset, but goes along with him anyway, and it's a winter premiere. Hmm. This seems oddly familiar. So they go to the park, and... <laughs> I don't, okay, I don't know what ages you guys are, but if you were a child in the mid to late 1990s, then you probably remember some Scooby-Doo movie specials made around this time. And there's this one with aliens, and this guy is a dead ringer for one of the characters in that movie. He, he's like, he recorded the aliens, and then there's like a painting of them in his house, and this guy's like, I got him in my mind. Oh, and I also like how Dinozo just like blatantly calls him a nut job to his face. Like, congratulations, you're a jerk. <laughs> but Bishop does come over to prove the guy's theory, and if anyone can prove aliens existed, it's Ellie Bishop. So Dinozo gives McGee some love advice. I thought that was a good idea. I feel like Bishop is a little more, dare I say it, Ziva this episode just with the facial expressions and how whenever Tony says something weird she's like what are what the hell and that uh it just reminded me so much of Ziva and I do feel like they're giving Bishop a little more personality which I do have to admit that I like and give them props for congratulations you are not a sheet of cardboard anymore yay and I still don't get Tony because one episode he's really mature and the next he's a bumbling man child again and I don't get it what is going on with him? Give us some kind of arc or message or some sign from the heavens that someone knows what's going on with this man, please. Because it sure isn't me. Of course Bishop is an expert in this whatever field they're in right now. Of course. Yeah, I know, right? So we get some weird fetishes from Ducky, but we also find out the man has a woman in his life and they smell her because the woman literally doused him with her body. My God, you people are strange, all of you. So Gibbs says, last time I checked, being with a woman wasn't a crime, unless you're Tony Dinozo or any other man on this show. But Hollis Mann is back, glory, glory, hallelujah. The almost wife returns. I love whenever a woman shows up and has some kind of eye contact with Gibbs. They're like, ah, oh, must be an ex-wife. So we do meet the wives, and I don't know if we've heard of Stephanie before. Is that new? Because if that's new, I like that. I like that we're actually getting some more facts about Gibbs, besides the fact that he 
we just keep repeating that he has multiple ex-wives. Also, Dinozo, this is some pretty brash action and some pretty harsh words for a man that just lost his girlfriend to a to-do list. So we get video footage of the criminal and wow, he's kind of dumb. No wonder you've been to prison multiple times. He's like, doesn't even have a mask on. He's just like calmly stacking his guns. Like, yeah, this, no, I don't really like that color. I'll probably, are those sirens? Oh. <laughs> the party's here. <laughs> so they find this van while they're looking for this guy and unfortunately they only find a kidnapped woman. If I had a dime for every time I found one of those. Then they interview the woman and it's the woman from the beginning and she talks about how there was all these men and then there was a polite one. And listen, if the polite one is the one that brings out the laptop showing you they're closely watching your husband, that's not a good sign. Please run. And then this woman is like... I heard them talking about someone important. I... it was something about revenge and... It was... It was something about Malila Schmielding. I... whatever that means. I don't... And so then we get a scene with the woman of the hour and McGee and she bought him a tux. This couple has so much potential to bring me so much joy. Two people. Couple having a fight right before a big event and there's a danger and people from foreign countries running around wow this is familiar why is my heart sinking to my shoes for a split second in this scene i thought they were playing tony and ziva's theme and i almost shot someone myself this could be completely wrong but i think Delilah might have gotten their own theme, kind of. Maybe it's just a part of another song, but I feel like they're playing the same eight or so seconds of music whenever they're on screen, and I actually really like it. I hope it's their theme. I would love to hear more of it. Well, I don't know how much more of it we're going to be hearing after this episode. <laughs> Moving on. And as Bishop talks in convoluted excessive metaphors, we find out some interesting facts about Benaparsa. He doesn't like to go to parties, and he doesn't drink, and he doesn't smoke, and he doesn't drop the dun da da There's obviously something wrong with this man. I mean, he also smuggled in a lot of weapons enough to completely destroy a nation, but I mean, that obviously can't be it. Okay, so then we have a scene in the basement, and does anyone remember the big shindig sc <laughs> I can't even call it a scandal, because I don't know what it was. But there was supposed to be some big storyline with Gibbs's basement and the boat and whatever he's building last year. And apparently we just completely shoved that storyline to the side. It was probably a ship for Tony and Ziva to sail away on, but that went well. Probably one too many holes in there. A lot of people were saying that the scene between Hollis and Gibbs was mirroring what Tony and Ziva would have said to each other and I can't really see it that clearly unless I'm squinting so I can't completely agree with it however I definitely definitely see where people are coming from and I could see a little bit but maybe it's just making me too sad because they're saying it never could have worked so maybe I'm literally just mentally blocking this. I do, I do see a little affair going on. I mean, Hollis, yeah, I forgot to mention, Hollis is married and but yeah, she's just, she's just having drinks with a, with a man. She almost had a serious relationship in his basement. You know, friends, things friends do. <laughs> They're obviously reading from the same friendship guidebook that Tony and Ziva were. So McGee and Abby have a conversation in her lab, but none of you are paying attention to that because all you can focus on is the fact that Abby has Ziva's Israel flag in her lab. Why did she give everything to Abby? Abby has her scarf, her flag, probably her firstborn child at the rate we're going. And then Bishop blows everything up. Literally, they could give this woman a weapon of mass destruction and be like, well, she could destroy an entire city. But she's so cute. I mean, look at her. Look, all oh, those eyebrows, so, so cute. So she blows up things and kills a man, but of course, yeah, I know. But she's still a hero. She's still a hero. She's 
boggling. This is mind boggling. I'm completely blown away. I am astounded at how they managed to pull this off. How Bishop just left this with absolutely no blame. She... She's just so perfect. I could just eat her up. Literally, I could just tear her apart with my teeth and devour her. So, so perfect. But we find out the guy was having an affair. The, the dame he originally done did is a different dame than the one he's doing now. Dupes. So this woman who apparently assisted a terrorist to save her husband hasn't had any contact with her husband. That's usually a problem. We find out she's doing it for bad reasons. Bad reasons. And we arrest her. Yeah. So the weapon's still out there. This can only lead to good things. So McGee attends the gala and he leaves to talk on the phone and leaves his loved one inside and she blows up. Literally, I don't even want to hint at it anymore. This is Shabbat Shalom version 2.0. Why? Why are we blowing up everything that brings me joy? Please don't touch Brina. Please don't touch that baby. Why? Just leave everything alone. Please let Delilah... Ugh. And I'm saying this, but I actually love that they did this because I love this drama. I would love to see some interaction between Gibbs and McGee and McGee be like, what is my life right now? But I actually really do like that storyline. I feel like it's going to be interesting and I really like Delilah and I hope that we see more of her. I hope it's not going to be like, this is too dangerous. See ya. Because that would suck. But overall, I did like this episode. I mean, I didn't think it was great. I didn't think it was awful. I just thought it was a good episode. I'm excited to see where it goes, especially because it's going to be McGee and Delilah centered, hopefully, next episode. I think it's going to be something like last year where you think you know where the finale arc is headed and then they take like this left hand turn at the last possible second. I would guess where they're going, but I don't have a darn clue. So leave me your predictions and theories in the comments and tell me what you thought about this episode because I honestly genuinely thought it wasn't a bad episode. Also, I have a fun story. Hopefully my camera still has battery left. One of my favorite songs of all time is To Build a Home by the Cinematic Orchestra. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but CBS has a new commercial out to this song and the opening is a scene from NCIS and I just, I heard the piano part and I saw that part on the TV and just, uh, I felt so many good emotions. But, um, those are my opinions on the episode. I will see you guys for the spoilers and theories for Double Back, which is like double blind and double whatever. Like, we've had so- <laughs> what's up with all the double episodes? Maybe I'll do a double back flip. I used to be able to do a back flip. I was young once. I'll see you guys later.